Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to discuss about a very very important topic particularly for the interviews and for the semester examination and extremely important in industry, particularly the petrochemical industry, the polyethylene industry, that is polymerization. Now polymerization consists of many types but if we talk about the two most important types of polymerization, they are bulk polymerization and solution polymerization. So I was having a discussion with one of my juniors a few days back and I came to know that this is a very deceptive topic and people have having a lot of misconceptions about bulk polymerization and solution polymerization that when and how bulk polymerization is used what is the principle of bulk polymerization what is the principle of solution polymerization and what are the advantages or disadvantages of the two types of polymerization so um, we are going to discuss straight away come to the topic and discuss about the bulk polymerization and the solution polymerization and we will basically uh, justify or judge the two types of polymerization on three bases that is our basis for today's discussion is going to be the heat dissipated that is the heat dissipated from the system and the agitation or the mixing and finally the purity. These are the three topics that we are going to compare these two polymerizations uh, into and uh, we are going to judge that what is best in which type of polymerization and what are the advantages and disadvantages henceforth. So um, coming straight away to the topic, if we discuss about the polymerization process, what is polymerization? It is nothing but if this is my monomer, this is my monomer and this is my polymer. That is, we are just breaking the double bond and introducing a chain such that the strength of the entire new molecule that is formed is increased. That is, this is ethylene, this is gaseous. What we do is we break the double bond, we break one pi bond and we connect one CH2 extra here and one CH2 extra here and the process continues. That is the double bonds are broken and converted into single bonds and the structures keep on adding forming a structure something like CH2 single bond CH2 whole N that is N number of elements in the chain that is a polymer of N degrees. So. Uh, this is basically breaking a monomer, breaking the double bond of the monomer and converting it into a polymer that is a larger chain which has a greater strength and a greater durability uh, like the polyethylene. So converting a gas to a solid state by increasing the number of carbon atoms in the chain. So it's a chain reaction. So you need an initiator. Initiator in most of the cases is H2O2 or oxygen. What it does is it itself breaks and then it attacks one of the carbon atoms to open up one bond of the carbon so that it can join with another molecule of the other carbon. So this is basically an initiating process where it is undergoing a chain reaction. What happens is it opens up the single bond and provokes this carbon to get into coordination with another carbon. So H2O2 or oxygen is basically an initiator which opens up the double bond of the carbon so that it can again bond with the surrounding or the corresponding carbons next by. So this is the principle of polymerization. Now talking about the bulk polymerization and the solution polymerization. As we can see I have drawn the two types of polymerization that is the bulk and uh, this is my bulk polymerization and this is my solution polymerization. So if I come to straight away to the polymerization process, bulk polymerization is nothing but a polymerization process where only monomers are present in the entire mixture. That is, it is straight away a reaction where the monomers are fed in, the initiation is given, the reaction starts and polymers start forming within the monomers itself and the monomers start getting converted to polymers. So what happens is, uh, this is the bulk polymerization. Now, solution polymerization is not only consisting of monomer, it is consisting of the monomer, 
the initiator and the solution. So what is the work of the solution? We are going to come to that. What is the principle? Why is the solution at all needed? So if we straight away now talk about the bulk polymerization, what is happening? As I have already said that monomer molecules are there. They are getting attached to one another and forming a chain. There is no solution. So it is completely like only monomers and polymers forming within the monomers. Now talking about the first point, the heat dissipation. That is the heat dissipated from the system. As we know that polymerization is an exothermic process. So polymerization, polymerization is an exothermic process. Remember. So when we talk about an exothermic process, we need to remove the heat as per the Le Chapelier's principle to provoke the forward reaction or to undergo the forward reaction. We need to. Uh, dissipate the heat that is uh, produced and we need to collect it from the periphery that is if this is my chamber and the reaction agitation is going on and the reaction is going on and polymerization is undergoing so you need to remove the heat from the system you need to remove the heat from the system by keeping a cooling jacket or some arrangement like that so that the heat doesn't develop within the system and the heat gets withdrawn and the forward reaction is favorable but what happens in a bulk polymerization is, since the system is only consisting of monomers, polymerization is such a process which undergoes solidification. As I've already mentioned, this is a gaseous state and this is a perfect solid state. This is a perfect solid state. So what happens is it undergoes solidifying in the process and polymers are not the greatest conductors of heat. So what happens is whenever it is solidifying in the process, it is solidifying in the process, it is not allowing the dissipation of the heat from the system to the periphery. So what happens is the central core gets heated up and the heat is not dissipated into the system. So what happens is the reaction rate slows down over time in bulk polymerization, particularly when the solidifying process is going on because the conduction of heat to the periphery where the cooling system is kept is difficult. That is, no heat is transferred from the center to the periphery. No heat is transferred. Only when the heat gets to the periphery, then we are going to withdraw that heat. But that doesn't become possible because only monomers are present, which is converting to polymers, and polymers are not the greatest conductors of heat. So straight away, the solidification process is reducing the dissipation of heat. So heat dissipation is a problem. Heat dissipation is a problem in bulk polymerization. Now coming to our second point that is agitation. Now we know that polymerization is a process which takes place by constant agitation of the system so that the homogeneity is maintained throughout the polymer. That is everywhere the polymer has equal concentration. So to maintain the homogeneity and to undergo the process it has to be a continuously starting tank. Like continuously agitating or mixing has to go on. So what happens is in case, as I've already said, the solid formation in bulk polymerization, since only the monomer is present, it doesn't have any fluidity. That is, it loses the fluidity and the agitation loses the fluidity and the agitation becomes difficult. So the, this is another prime advantage, the disadvantage of bulk polymerization. First of all, the heat will not get dissipated. Secondly, the agitation will become a big headache. Uh, now coming to the third, the purity, the purity, now the purity for bulk polymerization will be high since nothing but the monomer and the polymer is present. Yes, there are going to be problems of intact monomers. Another problem that is associated with purity is a plus point in bulk polymerization. In bulk, purity is a plus point because only the monomer and polymer is present. But what becomes a problem is to remove the monomer from the polymer. That is, whatever impurity is there in the form of the monomer is entrapped within the polymer molecule. That is, if this is my polymer, this is my monomer that is entrapped within the molecules of the polymer. And hence, this monomer is very, very difficult to remove because the fluidity is already lost and it cannot undergo any type of separation process to this to, to remove the solid from another solid. It's like, or a gas from a solid. It's like a gas entrapped in between a solid and you cannot remove it, unfortunately. So, 
removal of the monomer, removal of the impurity becomes a headache in terms of bulk polymerization. But the purity is high in bulk polymerization, so the heat dissipation is a problem. The agitation becomes a problem after some time the agitator will get stuck. The purity is a plus point and the entrapment of the monomer within the polymer molecule is a big problem once again. So this is one issue. Now if we come to solution polymerization, what is a solution polymerization as I have already mentioned, there is a solution along with the monomer structure that is the monomer is like this and this is the solution that is carrying the monomer. So it is acting as a carrier of the monomer. So talking about heat dissipation, heat dissipation is a plus in solution polymerization. Why it is a plus in solution polymerization? The solution is chosen such that it has a boiling point which is equal to the temperature of polymerization. That is, if my polymerization is supposedly of the favorable temperature is 65 degrees Celsius, supposedly I am talking about. 65 degrees Celsius is the favorable temperature for polymerization, that is actually considered Tp. So if the temperature increases, the rate of the polymerization will decrease, which was a problem in the case of bulk polymerization, which was the heat was not getting dissipated from the core. Now what happens is, here we see that the boiling point of the liquid that we have kept, that is TBP, is also 65 degrees Celsius. We have chosen the solution as such, or we have chosen the liquid as such. So what happens is, at 65 degrees Celsius, whenever the polymerization is taking place, since it is an exothermic reaction, the heat of exothermic reaction, that is heat of exothermic HX, will come into the solution and the solution will take it as latent heat and will evaporate up. That is, evaporation will take place. The solution will take heat at 65 degrees Celsius, that is its boiling point, the heat that is dissipated by polymerization, it is going to take that amount of heat as latent heat of vaporization and it is going to vaporize. And it is going to strike a surface here. There is a provision. It is going to strike a surface here and it is going to form a mist and come back into the solution. So if I draw an enlarged structure, it will be something like this. At 65 degrees Celsius, the reaction is taking place, heat is generating from the system, the solution is taking that heat, going up, taking lambda, going up, evaporating, striking a surface, forming mist, falling down. So the heat is being given to the surface. So straight away, evaporating, striking, forming mist, condensation, again falling back into the solution. And this is a continuous process. So the temperature doesn't increase from 65 degrees Celsius because whatever amount of it is given by the polymerization process is absorbed by the solution as latent heat of vaporization. So this is a prime beauty of solution polymerization. And the solution has to be chosen whose boiling point is 65 degrees Celsius. That is the favorable temperature. Uh, favorable temperature for polymerization. Like in the case of uh, HDP production, that is high density polyethylene, HDPE production, it is a solution polymerization process and it has the solution of hexane. It is a liquid of hexane which has a favorable boiling point as per the requirement of the solution. So for the HDP production, hexane is used as the liquid of the solution in which the polymerization is undergone. Now coming to the second thing, that is agitation. Agitation is also not a problem here as we can clearly understand that the monomers are forming polymers in the solution itself. So the fluidity, as we have talked in the earlier case of bulk, it was low, the fluidity is high here. And hence the agitation is not a problem, not a problem in solution polymerization. Now coming to the third and last point of discussion, that is, by purity. Now this becomes a stress for solution polymerization because to ensure proper purity after polymerization you need to remove the monomer which hence is easier because there is a high fluidity and you also need to take the additional headache of removal remove the to remove the solution. Now the solution, to remove the solution, like in the case of HDP, they undergo flash evaporation, that is decrease the pressure, 
flashita evaporate the solution secondly they undergo centrifugation ultra centrifugation wherein the solid will be collected at the side and the uh, liquid will be like liquid will be collected at the sides and solid will be collected at the center and thereafter they also used to undergo project with nitrogen undergo stripping filtration with nitrogen so lot of processes has to be done to remove the solution three to four uh, separation processes for solid liquid separation that has to be done to in ensure the purity of the polymer that you are producing so that becomes a headache if you don't want to undergo that headache then you can go for bulk polymerization but the heat dissipation and the agitation will become a problem you will have to find some alternative solutions like dipping some water tubes within the polymerization process so that they can Uh, dissipate the heat, or they can take away the heat. Um, like this for the agitation process, also you can keep solutions like this. So, if you want to ensure the purity in solution polymerization, you will have to remove the solution by multiple means. The removal of the monomer, the heat dissipation, uh, by a beautiful technology of uh, latent heat of vaporization and agitation is not a problem in solution polymerization, whereas it it was a problem in bulk. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I think the three basic aspects has been uh, discussed. Why the solution at all is used? How the solution is chosen has also been uh, discussed. If you liked today's video, like it, share it with your friends, uh, comment. If you have any problem, we are going to clear your doubts. Mail us. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much.